guys welcome back to the e-commerce with golang project series so we have completed our buy item from cart function now it's the time to build our instant buy function instant buy function basically is taking a product and buying it not adding it to cart that's instant buy how do you want to do it so the way to do it is that uh, some of the things that are happening in the previous function will happen in the sense you'll have to create an order right you'll have to create an order order being uh, your order out here so you'll have to create an order and you'll have to uh, you know add that order list also to the user so user collection you'll add the order and also the order list so both of those things that happen at the end of this function will happen but instead of having uh, to get the user's cart and all of that you don't have to do that you just have to take the product id and quickly start creating the order okay uh, it sounds very simplistic. It's not that small a function. It, it'll take some time, <laughs> but this is, uh, you know, in, in an instant, this is what we're doing in a nutshell. So you'll have your context, which will be context.context. .context. You'll take your product collection, take your user collection, right? Because obviously for that particular user, we'll create the order, right? collection then you have your product id so like i said instant buy requires the product id so that you can buy it instantly you don't have to go through the entire card find the total of the card all of that nothing like that product id is of primitive dot object id and then the last thing you need is user id which has been added by like automatically by uh, the golang extension for me this function might return an error. Okay. So the first thing that you'll do is also the first thing that it did out here, which is creating, getting the access to the ID. And then what you'll do is you will handle this error. So you'll say error not equal to nil. You will log dot print ln errors and you'll return user ID is invalid. Error user ID is not valid. Okay. So we'll create two variables now. So the first variable that we'll create will be product details. Will be of type models dot product user. Just to tell you, models dot product user is this, right? Which is the item that needs to be checked out or item in the cart. In this case, you don't have a cart, so this is the item that needs to be checked out. And then you have your order, which is this, your entire order, right? Because no matter, even if you want to do instant buy, you have to create an order for it, right? That's how you will store it for that user that you know this user had placed this order. Now, like we did last time, right? We created the order ID, ordered at all of that. We'll have to do that now as well. So what we'll do is we'll say order detail. Actually make it orders detail. Orders detail dot order underscore ID. This will be to the primitive dot name object ID. Okay. Now order that. So it'll be orders detail dot ordered underscore at time dot now. Same as last time. This is the timestamp for the time that is right now. Okay. And just like we did last time, we'll create an empty cart here, detail dot. And we'll probably leave it empty because for an instant buy, there is no list of order, right? So we'll say order cart is equal to, for now it's empty, then we might add just that particular product that he's buying, which we'll just add that one thing to the list, nothing else. So we'll have models dot product 
user, or we could also leave it empty, but I think I'll just add that one product that he's buying to the orders list. And then you have again your orders underscore detail dot payment method dot co. It's true. So you'll say product collection dot find one. What we want to do now, now is we want to uh, we'll get we're getting this user product ID right product ID in the in this function as an argument. We want to take that product ID and find the data for that product from our database, right? So the product that the user wants to buy, that product already exists in our database. So we have the ID. Now we want to find com the complete data of that product. So how do you find it? So we'll say ctx comma this one dot d primitive dot e. The key is fine, is going to be ID, but the value is actually going to be product ID. So you, here you'll say product ID. ID, okay, with capital D. And the way you want to decode it is with this model, product user. So all the data that it finds from the database, you want it to be decoded based on this model that you have created, the product user model, so that you're able to work with it and you have uh, you know, data that's uh, predictable for you. So let's say product underscore details. All right. And this may lead to an error, so you want to handle the error as well. So here you'll say if error is not equal to nil, you want to say log dot print ln error. So one more thing that's remaining is for that order, you have the ID, cart we created an empty cart ordered at price payment method we've done, price is remaining. So you'll say orders underscore detail dot price. How will we get the price? We can get the price from here very easily, right? We can get it from product details. So copy it. Dot price. Right. So product user that this data that he got from the database now and converted into this product user struct format has a price, and that price can be taken for the order price because we are just buying one item instant buy. It's not cart, right? So just that one product price is the uh, price for the entire order. Awesome. So now comes the time to add this order to the users to say that, okay, this user had placed this order. The standard procedure, we'll have a filter, we'll have an update, okay? And we'll have finally the user collection dot update one, which will have context filter comma update, okay? And this will lead to an error. And let's handle the errors. The error will be error is not equal to n. Let's dot ln error. And after that, we have to add the uh, details of the product to the order list. So for that also, we'll have, I'll call it filter2. I'll have update2. And I'll have the same thing, which is user collection dot update one have context filter two and update two and again I'll get to handle the error and if error not equal to nil we'll say log dot print error errors and if everything goes well for the error we'll return nothing etc now all that's left to do is work on our filter and our update okay and also filter to an update too. so for filter we want to use the id of the user okay because for that user we were we creating that you know this order was placed so we'll say this one dot d Primitive.e, and this is perfect. 
So key and value are both perfect. And actually this will be the same thing for filter two as well. Now for update, for update, we want to take this thing out here from here, uh, this one. But only a couple of things will change. So let's copy and paste this update from here, bring it here. But only the name of the variable this time is different. So it's order details, orders details, sorry, this one, right? Instead of order card, it's orders detail. So that's it. Your filter update are both ready. Now update two, for update two, what do you want to do is you want to go back up and copy and paste this line. Um, only thing is it won't be having this each part, right? Because you don't have to get all the items from the cart. So to copy this and to edit it better than that, I'll just write it from scratch because this query is much simpler than the one that we've used before. So I'll say pson.m. Right, so because earlier we had a lot of items in the cart, so we have want to get each of those items and put it in the orders list. But this time we just have one item, which is not in the cart, it's just the product. So we just need a much simpler thing. So we'll say pson. dot m orders dot dot order underscore list and here is product underscore details that's it so the product details that you've created here right from where you got the price. That's what you want to add in the order list. This could have been left empty, but I just added this particular product so that we can have at least some data on uh, the list of products in that order, that particular order, okay? So this was it. So this was your instant buy function. So we, we are left with a few things here and there, but mostly we'll start cleaning up and then you know fixing the code and then we'll start testing it in some time. So not much. Uh, left out here in this series. Um, if you've followed till now, that's amazing. Thanks a lot for following. And do subscribe if you haven't subscribed by now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.